that's a pull in, bless you. <gasps> oh my days, mate. Ah, uh, yep, wild horses. No, man, they're not edible. You can't eat that shit. You can't eat that, dude. Dude, rubbing its horse on my car. Look at this butthole. No way. I've got quad bikes and motorbikes circling the car. <coughs> Hi, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, welcome back if you've been here before. I think it's fair to say over the past couple of years we've found some amazing spanking overnighting spots with stunning views and in absolutely fantastic locations and this is definitely one of those. It's got stunning views all around. All right, cue the drone shot. Got a full phone signal and to be fair amazing people to hang out with for the evening it's been a stunning location and definitely one of my top five but today i'm going to be slowly meandering back towards leicester heading east and i thought it'd be rude as it's been legalized for rumbling and bumbling around dartmoor not to go over there and check at least a couple of spots out i've got a fantastic area to go to today one of the most popular areas in all of dartmoor and an amazing looking castle to check out the last castle to ever to be built in england so cribs all ready to rumble i'm set to go mate i'm living the dream let's have it took like an hour behind schedule oh, this is random there's like what's this all visitors this way there's loads of little places and spots for parking i'm hoping i can get dead close because i'm national trust and it's all owned by the national trust oh my days what a nightmare drive right i'm gonna go check see what the crack -a is with the parking here and then grab my cards and we go check this castle out we've got an hour it shuts at four so we'll bumble that first and then we'll take it from there well, I've got to say, I thought it was going to be quite a walk down to this last castle built in the UK, but it's not. It's right in front of me and I've got him. Let me just don the bifocals and I shall quote because I've got, oh yeah, a National Trust info card and but boom the side shot from it looked wicked it was built between 1910 and 1930 by renowned architect sir edwin lutyens for millionaire julius dewar and the castle was inspired by the rugged dartmoor tours that surrounded it and was shaped and chiseled by hand out of local granite despite its grand appearance on the outside the inside of the castle was a bit shabby to be fair and he just uh, kitted it out of all the local latest tech and whatnot probably not a widescreen tv i mean it was 19 10, but yeah we'll go take a look i'll tell you what as well before we do go in this julius wow he had his finger on the pulse didn't he he had some business called home and furniture or something stores or like it was more of a harrods type thing back in the day he must have made a mint out of it to be able to have this built not just buy it out but buy it and well build it and oh, just yeah nuts nice touch on the front though with the line love it to bit <laughs> Uh, right out. <laughs> you need an invitation to come in here, don't you know? Oh wow! Looks like it's been uh, 
left as it was in terms of kitted out, that looks wicked. It looks Asian to me, but it, what do I know? Oh my days, this is beautiful. I guess this is just like a reading room, huh? The library. Oh, what a collection of books. That's nice. It's like a collection like that. Oh man, this is gutting. There's, there's not much light in there, but I'll tell you what, some of the stuff here is fantastic. All these, like, I don't even know what they're called, but the intricacy on them. These, these are amazing tapestries at the back as well. Somebody has some serious money in there. What a spot. There's a little info video going on over the way. From what I hear, it was just a family house. Apparently there was him and his wife and five children in the whole place. I mean, wow, imagine growing up in a pad like this as a kid. Look at this living room. I've got to say, he's done well. I like the colour. Settees are good. This looks a chilling living room, doesn't it? Even if today this would be nice and chilling, it's not cold in here. I don't know what they do about heating, but... It is truly stunning how they built it as a castle and like turned it into a, an actual home. It feels like a plush hotel. It really does. Apparently the guy used to use it for like massive fishing parties and such, bring loads of people over here, have loads of people staying and just go out on the lakes or something around here for fish, you know. Right there, I'm going backwards and forwards. I tried to get upstairs, there's a rope and I didn't think you could access any more of the castle, but apparently you can go through the servants' quarters and get upstairs. Wicked. Look at the architecture. Look at the build. It's such quality. Oh, wow. Wow. I mean, it's pretty impressive, huh? I think it's that one. This, under here, this is all the servants' quarters down here. I think there's a pantry and a kitchen, and then there's a butler's hangout. Obviously, he had the best room, and then... I don't know, I guess the normal servants down here. I've got to tell you, I've just had a little sneaky look. This is fantastic. Wow, that's, um, that's pretty impressive, I've got to be honest. Real step back in time in there. Imagine living in that room and working in there. What a life. Right, I think what I'm going to do, because we could be in here for hours, I'm going to take a quick rumble around the rest of the house and then we'll see about stretching our legs on this side. to the bumble then i've got to say though before we do that castle was wicked mate and what an epic little find for a national trust member it's not often i find things that i can use it at so yeah it was pretty unique to find that and i've got to say the gardens there not only the castle but also the gardens around there were absolutely stunning didn't really show you much of it but i had a little walk through there on the way back out and yeah might do mine like that when i get back home could take a while but more importantly of the height as i say a pretty popular one no less than 529 people have rated this one on the oil trails app it's called the hunters and fishermen's path to castle drago but for us it's going to be the path away from castle drago i don't know we might get a little snippet of it on the way and apparently it's supposed to be a beautiful trail cutting through woodlands and views and the Ting Valley, apparently, and something to do with a fisherman. That much, I'm not too sure. But as it was such a popular trail, I thought it'd be rude not to come and have a look at it. Gotta be honest, to get that feeling of pushing the look a little bit. It's not super late, but it might be about seven o'clock when we get back, and the spot I've got, supposedly not too far from here for car camping tonight, but you know what it's like in Dartmoor. It's gonna be total shiznick bag roads the whole way, so, yeah, I don't know. It's probably about a 20-minute drive, according to the sat-nav, and probably about an hour and a half in reality. So, yeah, for now. Um, we're in nature. Let's have it. Twas right in the guidebook, or rather on the trail up though. There are some nice little views coming. Hopefully we get up somewhere and we'll get a proper shot round. Dartmoor, wicked, mate. It's not often I get this far south, so 
to be here now is pretty special. I mean, it doesn't feel up on the moorlands, this trail, no. But we will be there later and this is just a nice taste. So it's great to just explore other areas of places that you've been before and places that you've not been in those areas, you know. And hey, here we are today, Castle Drago. Sneak a little find on the map. And I literally did. That's what I do. I hunt round Google for little points that pop out the blue ones and the green ones and then yeah, see if they're worth visiting. And yeah, I think this one's uh, doing all right so far. Well, gotta say it, giving it big licks on this trail. I can see why this one's so popular. Look at these views. Wow. Another little precarious spot as always, you know, but well worth it. Stunning. It does give me a sense of a bit, uh, though, because I think all trails caught it right up there and then somehow cutting right back down there. So, wow, it's gonna be a big one. It should be a good one. Wicked, mate. What have you? Ah! Ah! And it's got an echo. We're all an echo. Oh, mate, I'll tell you one thing about this trail. Fantastic at the minute. It's all downhill. On the old trails, I don't know what it is, when you look at it on a normal map, it doesn't tell you which which way to go around the trail. You have to go on like 3D or, I don't know, the satellite view, and it tells you the arrows which way. I looked today, this was the way to go. The only thing with it is, if I'm going down this much, I've obviously got to come back up. I'm assuming the other side's just going to be straight up for the whole length. Oh, it's going to be hard work. Bloody old talk right there. Oh, nearly tripped. Keep going. Well, got to say it, this is random as bow. I hadn't expected this. A massive car park down here. I had no idea. I mean, that. It's kind of like the halfway point of the trail as well. Weird. I'd expected to come down to some like pack horse bridge or something funky like that, but wow, this is really popular. I'm blown away. <sighs> Guess I could have parked here at some point. I don't know. Ah, well. Just had a bit of lowdown on Inf on the area, wondering why this car park's so popular. Ta -ta -da -da. There's a pub here. Everyone's come down here to get steamboated, isn't they? Apparently it does food as well and it's quite good. I was thinking it might be the bridge that impressed everybody, but evidently not. It's the ales. So, yeah. Good spot, though. I mean, a beautiful little spot. Absolutely stunning. And it is. An old school pack horse bridge. You never know. I don't know. I used to have one down here where I used to live. I think I've showed you before on the channel. But yeah, a lot of these bits were standing out of the way when the horse is coming over his cart. Wicked, mate. Down in Devon. Not a bad little spot. Oh, well, this is awesome. Cutting off that last trail and that bridge, and now we're cutting along the river along what's known as the fisherman's path i mean you can see why just bumble down here and pitch up and put your rods out mate i don't know what sort of fish are in here or if there's many of them but yeah it'd be a nice place to spend the afternoon pretending to fish even if you didn't the fisherman's path wicked mate and it leads up to what they're calling the iron bridge which is mostly made of wood to be honest and well possibly some steel i don't know but it is a blooming beautiful spot. Look at the river down here. Not so much that side, but really glassy this side. And there's a little drop off down there, waterfall, small thing. Yeah, real nice. But this is the point where I'm gonna turn right and head straight uphill for about half an hour. From here on in, it leads back to the car park. So I think for now, I'll catch you back at the crib. Well, I'm all ready to go, but unfortunately, this is turning into a typical Dartmoor misadventure, or to put it another way, a total cock up and nightmare. I know roughly the spot I want to stay at tonight. I've no idea how to get there. I've got no sat nav, no map, no nothing. And part for nights just showing me the spot and not how to get there. I tried to download the map for Devon and everything the other day and I thought it had downloaded. Evidently it didn't. So now I'm in no man's land. I don't even know if I can find a phone signal around here. This is gonna be sketchier. One wrong turn, and I'm in Bumble Fluff Roads. There is an A road somewhere. I just hope I can find it and find tonight's spot. 
I'm not going to be hunting around tonight. I've got one spot in mind. Let's hope it's a good one. Thing is, as well, this is Dartmoor, isn't it? You're not legally allowed to stop on the moors overnight. So from here on in, it's all legit going to be stealth car camping. We could get moved on by rangers in the middle of the night with no phone signal. Fingers crossed. Oh, well, good news. We got a phone signal. Once I realised I'd turned off the mobile phone data on my phone and switched it back on, yeah, we had a phone signal and I was able to find where I was going. What a map it! Even better news, we're only two minutes from the spot. Fingers crossed it's a decent one. Seems good coming in though with signs that sheep lying on the road. You don't see that everywhere, do you? Let's be fair, could be a cosy spot. We're in nature. Rah. Bit wary now. Oh, there's a pull in. Bless you. <gasps> oh my days, mate. Ah, uh, yep. Wild horses. We got it. This is the spot. <sighs> Look at that, mate. Foals and everything. Oh, wow. How beautiful is this? Welcome to Dartmoor. Oh, yes. West Park. Oh, mate. Look at this one with the blonde hair. How cute is that one? They're dead little as well. I can hardly work out like which ones are big horses and which ones are foals. I think that's a foal. Look how skinny and small it is. Bless him. I think it's going to be all right tonight. It's not often spots and moments like this come around. Pulling up purely surrounded with wild horses for the night. I do remember. I'm not sure it was this spot, maybe another spot we parked at with wild horses on Dartmoor before. And I stood in all shit. Oh, and you know what? Freaking hell, dude. Oh, I don't want to be trampling all shit into my car again tonight. That suck. This one's not been christened with horse poo yet. I can't believe it, man. There's no one else here as well. It does make me wonder if there's been a ranger come round and move people on. Because it's kind of the time at night when people pull up at these spots. I guess we've come to find out. The worst thing is, I don't know exactly where I am in Dartmoor, but my thinking is this. If the ranger turns up, tells me I can't sleep in my car, I'll tell him I'm gonna go pitch my tent over there. I think this area, you can wild camp, so we could get away with it either way. For now, yeah man, I'm just gonna chill out for a bit. Say hello to me mates if I can. It's gonna be a good night. Catch you in a bit. Oh, well, I can't deny, it's been pretty nice for the past hour. Just chilling, watching the horses and the sunset. I did have to move the car four times because it kept coming over and chewing the car, but now they're just chilling doing the thing. It's been nice, but oh, I have got to get some food on quick. I'm so drained. I don't know if it's the fact that like, I've just hiked about five or six miles or the fact that I'm turning my body clock round at the minute, believe it or not, if you're a regular to the channel, I woke up at nine o'clock this morning, which is the first time I've woke up that early in I don't know how long, more than six months. It's the nature of what I do, editing at night. It's just with the kids, it's easier to edit and better to edit through the night. I'm a proper night owl, but on this trip, I'm turning it round. But food wise, nightmare. I'm totally drained and I've got two things to choose from because I've got either a ramen noodle which is going to be like a mild pain in the butt, just like a, a mild case of hemorrhoids. Or we've got full guns are blazing like your ass is on fire type shiznit and you need to get down to the doctors for some serious medicated cream because one of the doctors ain't cutting it tight, hemorrhoid pain in the ass. Yeah, the nasi goreng. Yeah, yeah, a nasi goreng. Indonesian, no less. And if I'm honest, when I used to live in Indonesia for about three years, that is pretty much like your go-to scram. Because essentially, it's just a fried rice. And I'm not being funny, like when you're in Asia sometimes, like I do like to try the food, I'm not into the chili, you know, but you can't always guarantee when you're backpacking through Asia that food's gonna be edible. I mean, so to go for a fried rice all the time is a bit of a safe bet. I mean, the meat might be a bit off, but at least you kind of know what you're getting. Example, 
Well, I remember taking a bus one time in Indonesia from Bumble Fluff nowhere to, I don't know where, Bumble Fluff, and probably about 12 hours through the night, I think. And there was a handful of other backpackers on the bus at the time. And we pulled up at this roadside food dwelling type thing that was falling apart shack to get some scram. And when we all got off the bus, it was probably about 12 of us. And we all looked at all the food that was on offer and well, none of it was edible food. It just, yeah, I didn't even know what it was, man. You couldn't identify it. But there was one thing that I sort of knew what it was and it were like these squid things. And one of the dudes, he was like, yeah, man, I'm traveling Asia, man. I'm, I'm gonna try everything, you know. 11 other people were like, no, I'm, I'm not touching that, man. I got a bag of crisps and maybe some small bag of peanuts in the car. That, that'll do me for like the next 12 hours on that bus. But no. This guy was having it large, wasn't he? So he went in for the squid, man, and as soon as he bit into one of these little mini baby squids, it persisted out ink all out of its body and whatever, and it all oozed out the side of his mouth and stained his teeth for, like, the rest of the journey. He had nothing to clean them with, man. He was gutted. And i got to be honest, it looked disgusting. He wasn't going to admit that it was disgusting because he was hardcore travelling through Asia. But his face told me it tasted like shiznit. You know. Anyway, I think tonight I'm going to do ramen because it's just going to be less of a pain in the butt scare than the old nasty garang. Right, I'm going to have my hands up. I've read the instructions. It doesn't sound great, but it kind of sounds doable. And it starts with some meat, apparently. Somewhere in it. Oh, mate. Oh, two bottles of mouldy milk, but apart from that, look, we're living the dream here, mate. Oh, God, it stinks of that camembert still, though. But, yeah, look, fresh veggies, man. Oh, I live better and eat better on the road than I do at home, honestly. Anyway, somewhere in here. There's some chalk. i tell you what, these horses are well friendly. No, don't jump in, because you look like you're going to try and jump in, mate. Oh, man. I think you can smell the vegetables. <laughs> hey, can you smell the veg? I haven't got any for you. No. Dude. No, dude, no, them on lights, man. Hey, all right, go on. There's nothing in here for you, buddy. He's not gonna go, is he? I'm gonna have to shut the boot. Bollocks, oh, he's going, wicked. Oh, crap, no, don't kick my car. Dude. <laughs> Fucking rubbing its horse on my car. <laughs> right on his butthole. <laughs> oh, dude, stop doing that. Oh, that's not cool, man. He's <laughs> rocking the car. <laughs> oh, god damn it, I need to get rid of it. No, man, they're not edible. You can't eat that shit. You can't eat that, dude. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> How do I get rid of that? <laughs> I need to cut my meal, man. You're gonna have to go, bro. Oh, this is not good. How do you shoe a horse? I'm gonna have to shut the boot. Go ahead. Come on, bro, you gotta go. Oh, he's gonna get the ump, mate. This is not gonna go well. Don't boot me car, buddy. Come on, stop rubbing your butt on my car, man. Oh, he's got shit there. What are you doing, bro? He's <laughs> rubbing his arse on my car. Come on, man, stop. Oh, freaking hey, dude. I can't get back in the car. He's rubbing his arse on my door. Come on, bro. I want to get in. Oh, freaking hey, man. This is ridiculous. Come on, buddy. I can't climb in this way. <sighs> Come on, mind your butt. Mind your nose. Oh, it's beautiful, but the kick, don't know. I've been kicked by an horse when I was a kid. It weren't funny, I went for miles. Dude, move your butt. Come on, little one. That's it, I'm in. Dude, it's gonna boot me. I'm in, I'm in. <sighs> Gotta be honest, that does not smell 
or look very appealing. I mean, it's raw meat, isn't it? It never does, and it makes me wonder why like, I eat it in some respects, because it's so minging. Although I did try to be a vegetarian many, many moons ago, and to be honest, that corn stuff, yeah, it's just crap, wasn't it? So, makes you wonder what's good now, like, as a vegetarian or something, maybe you can get, like, false meats and such, because it's nice to eat the same meals, isn't it? I don't wouldn't just want to start eating pulses and beans and such. I do like my steaks and my burgers and things every now and again, but yeah, anyway, apparently, oh, you'll like this one. We've now got to preheat the, uh, wok to smoking mode. Yeah, it does say that. It actually says heat to smoking mode. <laughs> um, no chance. I'm gonna pre it a little bit. Do you know what? This is actually quite a moment in the cooking in the crib because for once, we haven't got to regulate. We can just blazing glory, man, and not even worry about it. I don't want to burn the crib down though. So let's get some oil in. Apparently just a little splash. My ass. And in with the dead animal. Or rather, the chicken. You know, it is a bit of a mad one though, isn't it? Eating meat. I mean, in a way, like, you know, old me hands up. You want to do right by the planet by not eating meat. I mean, farming's like, yeah, killing the planet. But in other respects, kind of like evolution and what we're told and led to believe. If the apes hadn't started eating meat, then it wouldn't have developed the intellectual brain that became us and therefore we would not exist and therefore I, Jesus, would not be burning chicken in the back of the crib, man! God oh, damn, I've got to open the window and the door. And to be honest, in terms of my cooking, I'm not entirely sure evolution has progressed that much. Damn it! At least we're cooking it according to the recipe. Blooming smoking! Oh, I'm about to open the window. Only a little bit though. I don't want the oil sticking its nose through. <sighs> right, I'm gonna hazard a guess. That's borderline burning now, and apparently there's no flavourings or seasonings going on that whatsoever. We were just left with the smell and taste of semi burning. Oh, oh nightmare. Oh, I've about to drag out again. The bloody saucepan, if you're a regular to the series. This thing's took a beating on this trip, mate, and it's still full of remnants of food from days ago. It's not that I'm dirty or anything, I just can't get it off. Like creamy, sticky stuff. Nothing untoward. I did a tagatelli in there last night with like cheesy sauce and <laughs> smells like it's gone mouldy in the heat. Blech. Smells a bit like mouldy milk. Maybe a lightly toasted camembert. Good news. We're gonna put boiling water in there so it'll clean it off. Bad news, I'm gonna be using the boiling water for a soup, so yeah, bugger it. It might make me ill. Probably not. Right, hold tight, because this is where we start to create the ramen. I'm guessing. Oh, mama. Ooh, that smells all right. Bit fruity, you know. But it smells all right. Ooh. They never look appealing, but it does smell all right. And I'm assuming that's the ramen. And not to be outdone, they also give you a bag of herbs and spices to put in there. There really isn't much in that bag, is it? Does that really warrant that size bag? Yeah, you could have got away with a smaller one. Anyway, in with that as well. Do you know what as well? I'm going to do something mental, and I'm going to put a boiled egg in there. It's not boiled yet, but I'm hoping it will be. Right, and also, because here's the shitting, I'm supposed to be putting... <laughs> oh, crud these noodles in there. I hope they break up. That looks crap. It's just a ball of noodle. Anyway, yeah, noodles. Four minutes, soft, ready to rumble. And then when it's all cooked, apparently, then when it's cooked and you serve it up, you put your veggies in. I couldn't be eating raw bloody veggies if I do that. No, nah, man, I'm putting mine in now. I know what they're thinking. You get it in Asia, you get like the small little bowls and you put your bits in afterwards and all that shitting, but I'm not doing it. I'm putting my broccoli and my baby sweet corn and also what should be mang toot but isn't, I think the sweet peas in now, because, yeah, well, I couldn't get mang toot, so game on. Right, I've got to be honest, I think that is about ready to serve, so I'm just going to bosh the last bits in and stir it up and, well, maybe eat it out of the saucepan, to be honest. I really don't think that's worth serving into a bowl. I'm definitely just going to eat it out of the saucepan and not serve it. All right, I'll serve it. There it is. Got a spoon. Mate, that looks lush. 
Look at that. It's got loads of stuff going on for it. Oh, oh, my egg as well. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, that's going to be hot. Bear with. Oh, yes. Ramen noodle with chicken and done right with an egg. Hard boiled, no less. Legend, mate. I've got to be honest, for once, I'm pretty sure if that's a decent looking meal, I'm going to munch that up, see if I can find a movie because I've got a spare phone signal. And maybe I'll catch you guys in a bit before I go to bed. Hopefully, I won't get no bother and no rangers come round. Hopefully, I won't get chewed and bomb rubbed by the horses too much through the night. It should be right. I'll catch you in a bit. <clears throat> Check this out. Just had a cough screech into the car park. Kids blaring music, come up here cracking beers open and uh, smoking, don't you know? <sighs> Guess I'll be here for an hour or two. No way, I've got quad bikes and motorbikes circling the car. Well dodge F, just sat here watching TV and all of a sudden a quad, quad bike starts circling the car and a motorbike starts circling the car as well. Jumps out of the car and there's a car pulled up as well. I thought it was farmers or something, something well dodgy, you know what I mean? And the quad bike comes over, I'm like, all right, I'll just try and have a chat with them. Got chatting with them, they're Polish, but they live down here, they're local, and he works in the day and at night, they come up here like ragging the bikes around and stuff. He was like, oh, you're all right, yeah, just wanted to check, like, you, you're not scared or something, we just come up here, we didn't want to bother anyone. Looks like you were sleeping, so we're just gonna be around here for about an hour. Anything with it is, with all that noise, yeah, that's probably gonna pull the police up here later. See how we go. It's afternoon, it's quarter to one in the afternoon. What a nightmare. After all that stuff that kicked off last night, I think they left at about two in the morning and then I couldn't get sleep for about an hour. I just thought the police or rangers were gonna come up and move me on or someone else was gonna come along. My mind was racing. Finally got sleep about half three. And yeah, I've been awake about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. But it was a bit of a cool night in the end. Staying up here with all the sheep and the horses in a wicked little spot in Dartmoor. I'm not entirely sure I'll use this spot again. Maybe, but I do think this is going to be a good point to end this episode. It's been a good one. Well stoked about finding that castle yesterday. That was a real top little find for me, National Trust membership. As always, I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, all the good stuff, hit the like button, subscribe to keep up with the series. And definitely in the comments. And big love to everybody who watches, likes, subscribes, and comments on the videos. And a special big love to all channel members. Donate us on PayPal and buy me a coffee and like. As always, take it easy. Enjoy the camp from Dartmoor, while camping's legal. Bring your tents and stay stealthy. All right. <laughs>